everyone. Welcome to the Zoning Board meeting of January 10th. Uh, I'm the Vice Chair, uh, Mike Deveas. Next to me is Member Mr. O'Brien, Member Mr. Chin, Member Mr. Himmel, Member Mr. Franklin. From Inspectional Services, Jim Anderson is here, and our clerk, Mr. Murphy. Uh, if you have a cell phone, if you can turn it off, click on vibrate. Uh, if you're going to be talking to each other, you can do it outside because it gets a little noisy in here. We don't have a PA system. When you come up and testify, we have to record your voice on this little machine over here. So make sure you speak loud enough so you can do that. Now, um, if anyone's going to be testifying today, I need you to stand up and raise your right hand and swear under oath. Anybody going to talk today? Or you guys in the back are not going to talk today? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see here. First thing I want to say is uh, I'd like a motion to waive the meeting of the previous hearings minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to waive the uh, reading of the minutes of the meeting of December 13th, 2016. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, we have to go into executive session this evening for a few minutes. Um, so the reason we're going to do this is we're discussing a strategy for litigation that's uh, come up against us. And um, I have to conduct a roll call vote to see if people will agree with us. Still Brian. In favor of both? Yes, in favor of going to executive session. Mr. Chair? In favor. Mr. Hamill? In favor. Mr. Franklin? In favor. Uh, I'm in favor. So we will be back here in a few minutes, I hope. No more than 10. Council, do you want to come with us?
all the business tonight. Case 16-064, Juan Lynn for a variance finding to change the existing single-family public home to a two-family home with premises number 48, Newton and Quincy. I have a, uh, I've been asked to uh, delay this for uh, another couple of weeks. And so, um, over a month. So, but uh, still probably giving me a motion to extend the hearing to no, February 28th. Okay. 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 Actually, I should actually do this. So, we should make a motion. Right, right. Okay, and then we have to Right, okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman, regarding case number 16 064, putting along for a variance finding to change the existing single family home to a two family home on the premises of number 48 Newton Avenue in. Quincy. That's where it is. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to uh, reschedule the requested hearing uh, for February 24th. Second. 28th. 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 Sorry. Second. 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 Motion seen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Seven. Case number 16 16-058, Post of Property Development LLC for a variance of construction. A 60 unit multi family residential building on the premises number 23 and 31 Bridge Street, Quincy. Is the applicant or their counsel here? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Edward Fleming. I'm an attorney here in Quincy at Wallace. I represent Boston Property Development LLC tonight um, regarding the property at 23 and 31 Bridge Street in the downtown. Uh, this property is zoned Business C. Um, and as the board, uh, will may remember we were here a number of months ago it seems like this project's been going on forever um and i think we first appeared before the board on september 13th at which time we made a full presentation of the proposal so i won't bore you with the full presentation all over again but what i would like to do tonight if i may um is spend a couple minutes just giving you the highlights of the proposal and then turn it over to rob Silvio of, of mbach to talk to you really specifically about the modifications and revisions that have been made to the plans. Um, and that's really the purpose of, of this meeting tonight is to share with you the modifications and revisions. But really quickly, um, we are here before the board asking for dimensional relief regarding minimum lot area, building height, and, build, and some building setbacks. This is a very unusually shaped parcel of land on Bridge Street, as you can see by the highlighted red uh, area on the plan. Uh, and the topography and the, and the shape of the site creates a hardship um, that, that makes full compliance with the ordinance very difficult and burdensome. Uh, Boston Property Development, which is a Quincy-based uh, development company, which as you know, um, was involved in the, uh, the building of 999 on uh, Hancock Street, which is the old Temple Bethel building, as well as the building across the street on Mary Hump, uh Road, where they converted an existing office building to residential units. Um, and Boston property was located for some, for some time right on Greenleaf Street, uh, but still remains in the city of Quincy. Um, and Peter uh, McLaughlin, uh, their principal, um, uh, is, is a Quincy resident as well. Uh, Boston Property Development is actually proposing to construct on this site a 60-unit residential development. Um, it will include uh, two levels of parking underneath the building that provides for approximately uh, 81 spaces, along with parking across the street uh, that will provide for additional parking for the, for the uh, building, approximately 1.5 spaces per unit. Um, as I indicated, we made a full presentation of the proposal at, that, at the last meeting, so I won't bore you with the details of this uh, moving forward. What I would like to, to talk with you about is that on uh, September 13th, when we appeared, uh, concerns were raised by this board um, about, uh, about a few different things. One, the board wanted, before you felt comfortable to vote, that you wanted the planning board process, which is also a permitting uh, granting agency in this development process, um, to be further along in their review. Uh, and as you know, during the site plan review before the planning board, the planning board re retains independent engineers, um, peer review contractors to review all of the applicants' uh, materials, including the drainage, uh, the architecture, traffic, and, and the like. Um, and that process has been ongoing since we filed back in August. And to date, 
as with, will be reported or, or has been reported to the board, the planning department is prepared to make a recommendation on this matter. They've fully uh, completed their peer review of the development um, and are satisfied that the applicant has responded to all of the concerns that have been raised by not only the, the peer review consultants in the city departments, but also by the neighbors. Um, the other concern that was raised by the board at the time was, was to ensure that the National Park Service was satisfied with the proposal. At the time, if you remember, Marianne Peak actually appeared and testified before this body and raised questions and concerns about the development. Uh, she, she raised concerns about what the visual impact of the development would be on the National uh, uh, Park site. Um, and, um, and, and this board wanted to make sure that Marianne Peak uh, was comfortable that appropriate modifications and changes had been made to the plans. Um, and then the third thing that the board raised was concerns about the MBTA because of its close proximity to the MBTA site. Uh, the board asked that we make, reach out to the MBTA to make sure that there's been communication with the MBTA, that there's no concern uh, expressed by them. I can tell this board tonight, um, as I said, uh, a moment ago. The planning department has completed its review and is prepared to make a recommendation. Uh, since the meeting, we've had numerous meetings with Mary Ann Peek. Um, John Hansen from the development team and, and Chris have, have met with Mary Ann Peek on a regular basis. Um, and as a result of those meetings and also meetings with the, the Hospital Hill Association, um, uh, significant modifications and revisions have been made to the plans. Um, specifically, dealing and addressing concerns that Mary Ann Peake and the Hospital Hill Association raised, which was the, the visual impact of the, of the residential building on the National Park Service. And uh, Rob will talk about those uh, de detailed changes in a moment. Um, uh, Jim Burke is also here to talk about some drainage improvements that have been made, which is also a significant improvement to the development pro proposal, as you'll see. Um, and then lastly, um, we reached out to the MDTA, and MDTA is well aware of the proposal. They've been provided with the plans, the development plans, and the MBTA requested, and we, we applied for a permit uh, with the MBTA, which they are, and we've had ongoing discussions with them as they review this, this matter and the issuance of a permit. So a permit will be issued by the MBTA, and we'll continue to work with them and comply with their concerns. The, the MBTA will not be interfered with in any way during the construction of this proposal. They've been assured of that. Uh, but they'll monitor things moving forward and they'll have the appropriate contact to, to ensure there's no disturbance to the line uh, because uh, it's relied upon by so many in terms of. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna step on Rob's toes um, with regard to the to the changes. Um, and I'll let Rob talk about those things in a moment. But uh, uh, we feel as though we've made the changes and the significant changes in the, re in, in the review uh, that's been undertaken by the planning board and the peer review has been really in depth. Um, and we're comfortable that this matter is prepared to move forward at this stage. And we would ask that the board uh, consider doing so tonight. Uh, so without anything further for me, I can turn it over to Rob uh, to let Rob kind of walk through that. And then I'd like to ask Jim uh, Burke to talk a little bit about the drainage, and then we can uh, uh, open this up for questions and talk with you about that. Thanks, Ed. I'm Rob Del Savio from Embark Studio. So just to orient everybody, that's the site we're talking about there. The T and the MBTA lines, that edit, and this is the Adam site here, and as we'll, you'll see when we go through, we spent a lot of time with them and their view back to the subject property. So the slight enlargement. So again, out of the site here, Bridge Street and the somewhat irregular shaped property. Um, from above. Okay. So this is where we were back in July with the, the building. This view is sort of up in the air, obviously, looking towards the building on the side that faces most directly toward across towards the, uh, the Adams site. It was a, um, at this point a five-story building. It was four stories above the ground level, which had mostly parking on it. So you got back there. <laughs> So again, here is where we are. After significant meetings with the Park Service, a lot of new studies of what you would see in the building from their property, we decided best to cut back this portion of the fifth floor of the building. So where it was all the way out to this point here, we <coughs> cut it back and only left the fifth story 
back, push back further uh, from the perimeter of the facade to the next one. So that's where we were previously. So this is the view that we had put together to sh share with the Park Service based on the original design, the design that existed back in July, showing the extent of the building and what you would see from their property. As we went back and modified the design, we went to read the, the view, and they asked for us to step back further with your, your back almost against the house itself, and you can see how much has been cut down now from the view. So that, that entire fifth floor from this point going out is now removed we actually were able to drop the building a little bit as well, overall height. So, so again, just a view, again, this is the piece that's been removed, and this is what was there previously. Uh, the remainder of the project remains as it was. There's, one, there's now one level of subterranean parking, so we have 83 parking spaces on the site currently. And the next slide. And the first floor parking here, we could actually pick up a few more parking spaces uh, along the back side of the courtyard as well. And this remains some residential units, some common area for the, uh, the development. No change here for the most part. We still have 60 units, as I mentioned. The layout, pretty much like this. We're working on the interior layouts now. And this is where you'll see where the building previously had been. So we took out about 3,000 square feet on the fifth floor of the building by getting rid of this area here. We can probably go down to Jimmy's work now. Uh, good evening, uh, Jim Burke with, with uh, Sel Burke and Associates and for the surveyors and the engineers for this uh, particular job. Uh, you looked at the existing conditions and uh, basically uh, 2331 of uh, multi family homes uh, that we're, we're looking to put, uh, replace. So here's the building that we're proposing. Uh, the major changes uh, really consist of the drainage of this location. This remained the same, uh, but we had the drainage originally kind of added in to the, the drainage for 999 Hancock Street. We felt that that particular time it made sense to kind of just expand that particular drainage system that's already in the ground. Um, the city had some concerns with it, uh, so instead we uh, came up with a, a location of it right here. The advantage of that particular location is that it has about 20 to 24 feet of just coarse gravel sand. Uh, we had the advantage of uh, taking a look at that when, when 999 was being built, uh, had an exposed space. Uh, so we were able to change uh, Rawls rate. Uh, down, the soils down here are you know, not as good and uh, allowed us to get all the drainage in this particular location. This, we had a meeting with the city uh, engineers, and they asked us to contain the entire 25 year storm body that's generated off of this roof. Uh, that generated uh, nine six foot diameter, 12 foot deep leach pits. Uh, so it's a substantial system. Uh, takes on all the, all the storm water up to a 25 year and actually contains a lot of the 100 year storm. To release the overflow for the 100 year storm is a, uh, a what I call a level spreader. Basically it's a, a 100 foot long pipe uh, with I'll say a one inch orifices drilled every two feet. So what it does it kind of mimics uh, laminar flow across the land as opposed to we originally had just a kind of a point discharge and uh, Quincy Engineering had an issue with that with erosion, et cetera. So we came up with this scenario and uh, they seem to like that. Uh, but uh, everything else, as far as utilities go, uh, off of Bridge Street, sewer, water, uh, we talked about that. But, uh, we'll be doing a fire flow test, of course, but uh, they believe everything is adequate to service the building. If you have any questions that you'd like to answer? So that's essentially the applicant's <coughs> presentation tonight. Uh, and just to highlight, uh, Rob talked about the, in addition to the to the change in the building in that fashion by eliminating that fifth floor and the view from the uh, national park, the discussions that we had with Marianne Peak and with the Hospital Hill Association, but primarily with Marianne, was also the materials that will be utilized for the building, and there was a significant amount of time 
uh, spent on the material discussion, the types of materials that would be utilized. And as I indicated to a Hospital Hill neighbor and the Hospital Hill Association, uh, that will all be incorporated into the planning board's decision as it was in the final design plans. And that discussion will be ongoing. And we also are appearing before the Historic Commission um, as on the 23rd, at which time the Historic Commission will also weigh in regarding historic uh, uh, matters, things of color and material selection and things of that nature. So there's a number of layers of protection for the, for the, um, for the uh, Adams National Park to ensure that they will, there will not be any negative impact upon them. And uh, to highlight what Jim said as well, um, the removal of the drainage by treating, not no longer using the 999 drainage system and, and pulling it back and dealing with drainage on this site is really just additional protections for the uh, Furnish Brook Riverfront area. That there's no in additional intrusion on that. And we actually obtained an order of condition from the Conservation Commission for the initial plan, and we're gonna and we'll be able to revise that now in a positive way because we've now dealt with the drainage on the site. So I think it's uh, there's been significant prog um, you know uh, I think progress made. The work, the level of work that goes into these matters, with the level of review that takes place at the planning board is really important, I think, for the community to understand as well, um, because nothing uh, nothing is left without a level of review and, and, uh, and uh, comment. So that's our, essentially, our presentation. I have one question. Um, the, the gentleman from Interfaith, um, was it okay? Yeah, we've, had, we've continued to have discussions with Interfaith Social yeah. Services. I don't anticipate. Hi, I'm Jim Thorne. I'm Jim Facilities Chairman. Hold on one second. Let's okay. finish this part first okay, and I'll call you. Okay, thank you. So Sorry. we have had, I think, continued discussions, but those discussions will be ongoing because there will be improvements made to the, to the Bridge Street and, and things of that nature as well as part of our um, the final conditions of approval from the planning department. And uh, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll, we'll, we'll have to have discussions, but we'll want to have discussions with our neighbors. Okay. Thank you. Frankel? Um, and just in your in the um, explanation of revisions, where where's the off the new offsite parking? Is that by protection? Sure. Yeah. Oh, the offsite parking. Yes. Uh, the some spaces are right down in this location here. Uh, there's the existing. If you go back, go back one. So you can see the what we're basically taking this. Drive, uh, driveway out in this garage and just kind of building that out a little bit. Is that your property? Or right. Yes. To sit to but, yeah, Boston property, the, the principals of Boston property own that property. That's what gave them the opportunity. And what, what was great about that, and I think what was what, what, the, what the planning department liked, is that it provided clean, clear um, uh, uh, visitor park. Uh, I agree. I just wondered if, how, how, who you're dealing with and if we've got to that East Meadows have been needed in with the property. Yeah, and the, deep, the, the terms of that we're still working out with the, the, uh, the planning department, but it will likely be an easement with, a, with opportunities for extension with review of the planning department determined need. What we think that the park actually provided at one, one and a half spaces, believe it or not, will actually be more than sufficient to service this building. But it, if, in the event that those spaces are needed, it will be Thank you. Anybody want to speak in favor of the project? In favor? Once, twice? Yeah, I'm we're, <coughs> in the faith that we're not opposed to the project. No, no, no. no. Good idea. I cut you off before your name and address the room. My name, I'm Jim Thorne, uh, 78 Granite Place, Milton. I'm the past president and the uh, chairperson of the facilities committee for uh, Interfaith. Uh, I hark back to what I've said in the past. Parking is the big concern there, and it's also uh, that uh, flows to the city, uh, correcting some of that parking on Thayer Street, uh, where the uh, residents uh, park there constantly. Uh, I was by, that, by uh, Bridge Street today. We had about 10 cars parked there, which uh, took just about all the available parking. Uh, that's available there on our end of the street. Uh, we're concerned about the, uh, you know, the, the two parking lots now will have additional egress and traffic from the guest parking. So uh, 
this was, when we moved there 20 years, so years ago, uh, we went there as a business, uh, non-profit business, but it's a business. And uh, just like the other businesses in the area, uh, we, we were growing, we have the, uh, I believe it's the dental clinic, which is on the other side of us, and uh, everybody uh, that's there, as well as the businesses on Adams Street, uh, depend upon uh, that circulation through Bridge Street. So uh, we're dependent for our clients and customers at the food pantry and at our thrift shop <coughs> uh, into the evening on the council of the parking. And that's our big concern is, is parking. And that we've had some discussions, our executive director has had, had some discussions with uh, the owner, but we we have nothing in writing and no commitments of what what uh, the ultimate result will be. Uh, so uh, I want to reiterate and just say that, that we still have that real issue of concern. Thank you, John. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Points by Steve had to put that plug as we speak. Yes. Right. Uh, Name's uh, Alexander Seth. I'm from a neighbor. I live on Adams Street, 156 Adams Street. Um, I, I, I'm not necessarily in favor or opposed. I just wanted to, to speak briefly here and, and first thank them for the collaborative process they went through, both the Neighborhood Association, which I'm a member, and, uh, and Marianne National Park Service, but also second, just to, to give a voice, uh, just a general concern or, or, or point about this whole district that you have here, which this is now one piece that runs from, from the, the Woodward School and the Historical Society back to Furnish Brook along Hancock and Adams Street. This is, a, um, uh, I think, a holistic unit of, of parcels, um, and this is, uh, this is going to be potentially quite a dynamic area in Quincy, um, and right up against what is um, very close, just on the other side, there is a, large, is a series of very small streets and single unit housing, um, that could be very mutually beneficial and it could be a real asset to the city. Um, it also could be quite, uh, quite a mess if it's, if it's not done correctly. So I think this is, um, I'm optimistic there'll be future development in this area, but uh, just wanted to start the process and put on the record that we're all um, uh, interested in, in, in a holistic plan to be working with the planning commission in the future on, on these issues. Um, and again, Thanks to the DCF for being collaborative support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I apologize. Anybody opposed or undecided wants to speak? Opposed or undecided? Step right up and state your name and address. I'm not necessarily opposed so much as I have a question, but we trust giving you a name and address. I'm sorry, Bill Zams, I'm Ken Edgewood, Quincy. I'm not so much opposed as I need a question to answer before I can make the call. Long story short, I read what I view as a second round on the peer review, and it was dated in December. And a number of the things that Attorney Fleming has said have been taken care of were still under question by that draft that I saw. There were a number of other things mentioned, uh, including concerns about connecting to the parking lot, the, the satellite parking space, the trash plan, and concerns about uh, driveway angle. My question to Mr. Fleming, has there been a third iteration of the peer review? Yes, there were responses provided. To a third iteration? Yeah, yes. In response from the peer review board? Yeah, and there's conversation going on okay. all the time. That's why I talked That's about the level of review. Again, yeah. I mean, is my read of the second document right. reasonable? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, those Fine. Yeah. No, okay. no comment. Anyone else opposed or undecided? Twice, three times for that public hearing. All the yeah, no, no new correspondence. No new correspondence, okay. Um, it's been around a long time, guys. I must not have had it over there. Mr. Prego, what do you think? Uh, I follow the project. I appreciate all the work that's going in with satisfying the national parks, dealing with the MBTA. And part of our decision should be positive, I assume, would be to comply with all of the recommendations from peer review as it is ongoing. Um, obviously, parking is the issue. But they've done a great job of providing a substantial amount of on-site parking. I understand the problems with egress uh, on the satellite, but having satellite parking for overflow 
Uh, we took a substantial step, which I'm pleased to see be taken. Uh, parking during construction is something that hasn't really been discussed, but I will presume that they'll be working with Interfaith and everyone else to make sure that that doesn't become a, a whole disaster. I think that the area is, you know, they're coming right down this area and all the buildings are going to be really, really advantageous and, and a benefit to the city in that corner of the I too, I think it's a great deal that you've uh, shaved the uh, flooring down to make the National Park Service uh, happen. Uh, it's a huge uh, attraction for the city. I hate to see anything happen, <coughs> happen to it. Uh, Off-site parking, I think, is a great idea. Additional parking. It looks like you've really addressed the migration of any off-site water far in excess of what you needed to do in the project. Um, I think it's great for the area. Thank you. Water things I won't go over that already mentioned as considerations. I'm, I'm happy with the collaborative effort. I'd like to say that I'm going. I'll be fair. So, right. The same way as my fellow board members that uh, the reviews that have been conducted uh, for the fair review from the planning board, uh, we have a minor piece of this. So uh, I think again, there's been a lot more oversight than more than I thought. Right. Council is. Uh, when is the next planning board? You haven't been approved yet by the planning board, but you anticipate that you will be. That, that's correct. Um, it, the next planning board is actually tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Right. The final recommendation will be uh, will be presented at that time. Well, I would like to include in our uh, in our uh, case, our decision that we need the approval. You know, that we need the approval of the planning board. I mean, the planning board. I'm also in favor, so get a chance to. Case number 16-58, Boston Property Development LLC for a variance to construct a 60-unit multifamily residential building on the premises number 23 and 31 Bridge Street, Quincy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to grant the requested variance uh, and subject to the approval of the planning board and uh, we, we require for the allowance of the requested variance uh, to be administered. Motion seeing no one in favor. Oh, okay, second. 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 Sorry. Second. 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 Motion seeing no one in favor. Aye. 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 You guys have it. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Nice work. Uh, folks, I, I'm uh, usually the vice chair here, and so I, I neglected to do something earlier in the meeting, which I want to take care of right now, especially if you're hanging around here. Steve, you try to get uh, council. For Garfield Street? For the 16-081, Gabriel Holmes, Gary Gabriel, for a variance constructing new 2.5 story residential structure on present number 108 Northfield Street. My understanding is the board counselor wants to uh, continue this. Right, and we were somewhat chided in that level of the Senate. But I uh, want to say my, my client under oath tonight will swear that he tried to call him three different times on three different occasions, never got a return phone call. Well, I believe that they'll be going to stay on the phone. Okay. But, uh, and I know the only reason why I'm sort of leaning to granting this uh, extension is because of the holidays. 
this year. Because of the holidays. Oh. You know, it's been tough to get yeah, these people. Yeah, I understand. So uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to make a motion to continue this to the 14th of February. Yeah, that would be fine. Thank you. Okay. Motion. Uh, motion. Okay. Regarding case number 24. 16 dash. 44. 24. Yeah. Oh, sorry. January 24th. Wait. February 14th of 28. Oh, what is your next meeting? January 24th. Yeah. Not getting that one. Did you want to continue it until when? To the 14th of February. Oh, the 14th of February? Yes. No, I'm not sure. Regarding case number 16-81, Gabriel Holmes, Gary Gabriel, for a variance to construct a new 2.5-story residential structure on the premises number 108 Garfield Street in Quincy. I'd like to make a motion to reschedule and request this meeting until February 14th. 2016. 17. 17. Okay. You're late. <laughs> Second? Second. The motion seeing them all in favor? Aye. Opposed? See you next month. Thank you very much. Okay. Case number 16-082, uh, Intrigue LA, LLC, John McCormick Manager for a special purpose. Flood plane to construct a new six story, 72 unit residential building on the premises numbers 31 Newberry Street and 26 Denmore Street, Denmore Street, Quincy. Uh, I have a letter from a correspondence from the Ward Councilor that he wants to uh, uh, delay this until uh, two more weeks. I'm not sure exactly why, so he wants to get in touch with the folks that are here. Uh, so we'll do that. So that meeting, we'll, that year will be held on January 24th. Regarding case number 16-082, Key Treating LLC, John McCormick Manager for a special permit floodplain to construct a new six-story, 72-year, 72-unit residential building on the premises number 31 and 26, 31 Newbury Street and 26 Densmore Street in Quincy. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, reschedule the requested variance hearing until January 24th of 2017. Second. We'll have to see another one family. Aye. Still has it. So uh, get in touch with your board counselor if you like and uh, tell them what you think. January 24th. Thank you. And now I have a order for 116-084. Yang Lee Rong for a fine to change the use of from a travel agency for massage therapy on the premise number 657 Adam Street, Quincy. Sorry they can stay here so long, but again, the counselor. Yeah, the list started. actually looked a lot, lot longer than uh, the time has gone by. I actually don't represent this lady. This lady is a tenant of my client who's a property owner. Uh -huh. And what she would like to do is she'd like to withdraw the application. I've had previous conversations with Mr. Duca about this address. The address needs zoning relief. This is not the relief that it needs. And it's been explained to her. And um, we convinced her with Gerard. I'm going to reapply on behalf of the property owner. Okay. That's, that's what we're seeing. For 67 Adams? Yes. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, motion to withdraw without prejudice. Okay. We've got in case number 16-84. Yan Lee Ron for a finding to change the use the use of from a travel agency for massage therapy on the premises night at 657 Ab Street, Quincy. I'd like to make a motion to withdraw this case at this time without prejudice. Um, okay. Second. I have a question. Okay. Um, well, if they, they think there's a variance in the house and stuff. So okay. if you authorize to you want to withdraw the case, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yes? She wants to withdraw. Okay. She wants to withdraw. Okay. Okay. Right. That's fine. Okay. Second. 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 Second.
that leaves us with 16 083 94 Liberty Street LLC for a special permit. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Thank you. Let's jump ahead. Let's jump back with 16 080 Nissan Hungary, five digits from the second story edition of premises number 12 Marymount Avenue. Is the applicant or the representative here? Okay. I'm Simon from uh, New Brothers and Company. I'm the contractor for 12 Mary Mount. Tell us what you want to do. We want to build an addition in the back existing uh, porch. Uh, the addition in the back already. We're just going to put another uh, living room on top. Okay. Just just on the second floor? Just on the second floor. Any questions? Yeah. Of the applicant? What's what's on the first floor? In the, in the back. Where are you gonna put it? It's a bedroom on the yes. first floor? Okay. And you're gonna put a bedroom on the second floor? Uh living room. Uh, a living room. Yes, sir. Is that, so it's currently a two family? Yes, sir. They're just going to expand out of the back and add? Oh, the, the back door expand. We're just going to go on top of the existing. Okay. Yeah. No further questions with the channel. Okay. Yes, because the they had um, the egress for the second floor. Is that it's right on top of the, the first floor bedroom? It, it goes on top. They have, they have a deck on top of the roof that goes down. So we're gonna <clears throat> put the second floor and extend it, uh, the the egress back and have the stairway go down instead of be on the roof, be on the side of the house, the back of the house. So what, what is the hardship here? Uh, I don't know. In fact, it's just a joke. It was only.